Hi my friends, a very good morning. I'm still in Slovenia around uh, Socha Valley and I came to a waterfall here that is called Virje waterfall, Slap Virje. And yeah, it's a really beautiful place and uh, yeah, we can hear the water already. <laughs> and I can also look already down already. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Let's go down there and let's try to get a fantastic photograph. So I'm here already at the waterfall and it is really absolutely amazing. It's such a beautiful place. Let's look there, we have this bigger waterfall here at the left hand side. And here at the right hand side, also dropping down a little bit of water. And to be honest, this waterfall hadn't been possible to photograph yesterday already. It didn't rain for quite a long time. And it, it rained yesterday and also over the night. And so this is the reason why it works now. We have enough water here. It looks really, really fantastic. So, to be honest, it's quite tricky to find a, a working composition here. Uh, but what I've done is, uh, I mean, I always uh, think about what are the, the features, what are the characters I'm, I'm uh, most drawn to uh, at a place, what, what really, that attracts me. And this is the water here, obviously. This uh, balance between the big waterfall at the right hand side and this multiple um, thinner waterfalls at the right hand side. Uh, this is a nice balance, I really like this. And I also like all the greens up there, these mosses uh, and the grasses there. And here also, also we have spring, the, the, the leaves uh, are really lush in the moment, that's really fantastic. And quite important here is also uh, the, the ground of the water. So, I mean, when we look there, we have lots of lines, they are leading to the waterfall. And first of all, I tried uh, to think about, I thought about uh, using one of these lines as a leading element. But yeah, that's really tricky here. And we, we could uh, photograph a portrait shot of this waterfall with something like that. But to get the entire scene in, we have to place our elements there and where, where it really adds to our composition. So quite important was, and I hope you can see this here with the camera, um, this big boulder there on the ground. And this is a really important element. It uh, balances also the left hand waterfall a little bit. And we have also, yeah, this, this, uh, this stone line here at the, le at the right hand side with this, uh, lots of pebbles down there on the ground and uh, this uh, more solid uh, uh, gray green, it's more green down there. And also these lines back there, this is more yellowish, reddish a little bit, something like that. And yeah, I, I use these lines here to frame my scene a little bit. And they also lead back to the waterfalls. I also decided to take this uh, tree here at the left hand side, this lush green tree back there into my frame. Yeah, it's a nice element there. It uh, ends the image there obviously and I really like this. I use a circular polarizer and I pull it to the maximum in this case. And the reason therefore is simply because the ground of the water is a really important element here. It's, it's absolutely important even more important than the surface. And I took two exposures, one for the water and one for uh, the pool here. And I decided for a shutter speed of an eighth of a second for the floating water, because the springs has really lots of, of these lines and, and, and texture into our water, which is really, really fantastic. And the surface of the water here, I, I wanted to get it a little bit longer, because, yeah, I mean, there are some ripples there. I, I want to have a tiny bit of that maybe, but I, I want even more to be able to look down to the, to the ground. As I already mentioned, that's, this is really important for this composition. What a place, it is amazing. <laughs> so I would say, let's go over here and let's make the quick. It's quite slippery, it is amazing. So, 
I found one more composition and yeah, this waterfall is so beautiful. It is so amazing. And what I've done now is I simplified my composition a tiny bit. I, I've gone a little bit closer. I mean, I zoomed a little bit in. I didn't really go closer. I mean, I have my wet trousers with me, but I don't think that I will, yeah. Here it's too deep. We have around about two meters or something like that. Yeah, maybe there or so, but um, yeah, we will have a look later. So what I've done is I zoomed in a little bit more and I put my emphasis now more on the left hand waterfall and also this right, um, yeah, this is uh, water what's coming down here. And I don't include the tree and, and on all too many boulders or something like that. It's really more all about the water falling down here. Yeah, it's a waterfall, obviously. And it's really fantastic. It's so beautiful. What important to consider here is where you cut your frame. So uh, where, you, where you have the border and so on, what do you include, which lines do you include, uh, so that you don't have all too many distracting elements in the corners and also on the edge and uh, yeah, that you balance the image. And I think, as I already mentioned for the, for the last composition, these, uh, these uh, tiny thin water lines coming down here balances this big waterfall a little bit. It doesn't need to balance 100%. This is not necessary. I mentioned this already so often in my videos. When you're at the waterfall, I mean, it's, it's, the water is crashing down, it's loud. And uh, this is also something, yeah, when you bring it a tiny bit out of balance, in my experience, this, this leads into the better story. So I would say, let's put the towel down here. Let's make the click. And it started to rain again, so I, I think I will, I will take my, my rain uh, jacket because, yeah, I, I'm here with my van and it's really difficult to dry everything. I had already yesterday was everything wet, so it's really, it's really difficult to, to dry everything. What a fantastic morning, it is really amazing. I found one more composition and I mentioned this so often in my videos, don't only look for the obvious things and the obvious things are the waterfalls back there, what are really, really fantastic. And what I also found here now is this tree back there. I'm not sure if you can see this with the ultra wide lens, it's quite uh, wide, uh, far away, but it's really this, this saturated lush green here, pop really out fantastically. It is, it is quite at the rock back there. We have lots of, of, of uh, boulders here in the foreground leading back to the tree. Every there are the mosses on the, on the, on the rocks, that's so really, really fantastic. The only problem I have in the moment is, you know, timing is a quite important thing when you want to uh, take a fantastic photograph. And I'm already here for around about two hours or so because I yeah, really struggled to find the composition here, to be honest. But now it's already a little bit uh, later and uh, lots of people came already here and I do quite hard with finding the right timing to take the, the shot, uh, yeah, to, to not to get people into my frame. And uh, uh, the girls you can see down there uh, in my frame in the moment. So it's not a big problem. I just see we don't have wind in the moment. So it's, it's really fantastic for the tree to getting the, the exposure right now. And what I will do is I will take the shot right now to get the tree without any movements, the leaves without any movements into my frame. And as soon as they have gone down there, they will go, I'm sure. Then I will take another exposure for the foreground. And if there will be wind later or a little bit of uh, movement in the, in, the, in the trees, I will blend the image afterwards in Photoshop. From the technical side, I've gone to my uh, long lens here now. I'm at around about uh, 90 millimeters, something like that. I've also circular polarizer up here just to, to get the greens more saturated and more popping out. And uh, yeah, I would say, let's make the click. And this is one of these spots where I could photograph the whole day. It is absolutely amazing. So many possibilities for compositions. And what I've done now is I have still my, my long lens on and um, I, I picked up the detail there 
this kind of cave. I mean, it's not really a cave. It's just a tiny bit. Uh, it goes a little bit in there. I mean, some, something like a meter and a half, something like that. And we have the water falling down above that. We have all the mosses on the rocks, and it looks so fantastic. It's really amazing. And we get the light from the left hand side. If we have this bright part here, the left hand side uh, from this rock, it, it gets darker and darker to this kind of cave. And yeah, this transition looks really, really fantastic. And I balance this scene actually with these bright greens here at the left hand side, this light there, with the, 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 yeah, the, the thicker water there. I mean, it's a really thick, all, all they are thin there, but the right hand one is the thickest of them. And yeah, this balance is the, the green at the left hand side, obviously. I've also my circle of polarizer on, uh, yeah, just to get the greens more out. And yeah, I would say, let's make the click. the parking place actually and on the way there I, I thought this woodland is so fantastic here with all these leaves here and all these old trees everywhere there and where it's truly really so fantastic everywhere the mosses and so on and I, I followed a path here and I'm blown away by this place just look back there it's amazing trees here in the distance I hope you can see it I think it's 400 years old or something like that and it's so fantastic framed with the with the trees up there I also have this rock here, what, what leads here from the right hand side into my image. We have this amazing waterfall here in the foreground. And also this, this rock here in the middle of the pool is also quite important to lead us back there. And yeah, I mean, we have this, this hill back there so I can photograph a tiny bit upwards. Usually I try to photograph a little bit more down in woodland so that I don't get as high into my photograph. But as we have a, a mountain back there and also a hill there, it's not a problem to photograph a little bit upwards. So amazing, just look at these mosses back there. <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless. I'm really speechless. It is amazing. And I came already here to set up. I'm here straight at the water and I have my 24 to 70 millimeter Seamaster lens on my Sony A7R4. I also use a circular polarizer here to get rid of the glare here on the water surface. And I also want to have the greens popping out a little bit more back there. Oh man, what a place. I mean, the woodland here was well, amazing for woodland photography. <laughs> it is really outstanding here. So, I would say, let's make the click. Fantastic. Uh, this is a source of a, of a brook here, of a river here. It's really amazing. It comes out straight back there, <laughs> below the tree. This is the, the guardian of the water here. <laughs> so, I found one more composition. I, I zoomed a tiny bit in. I'm at quite the same camera position here, to be honest. And I delinquish here now these uh, uh, trees up there, also the, the waterfall in the foreground. I go more to the distant elements. And so I have the, the boulder, the big boulder here in the pool as my foreground element. Also some boulders at the left hand side. And the stuff to show is uh, actually really, yeah, a tree back there. <laughs> it's so fantastic. I'm so excited about this place. It's unbelievable. So I would say, let's make the click.
It is unbelievable what Madame Nature has to offer, isn't it? And I've checked out a couple of other places around Socha Valley in Slovenia as well. For instance, I've been at Tolmin Gorge. I didn't flock there as the trails were quite narrow and uh, sometimes they came lots of people through. Just let me show you two of the images I got there. They're quite interesting. I didn't have time to print yet, um, yeah, as we arrived yesterday evening. But however, this image here was taken from a quite narrow gorge which was totally in the shadow. Just a little bit of light uh, came to the foreground and the water was steaming. That's what leads into such a fantastic sense of depth here, uh, back to the distance. I like this image. It gives an impression of uh, how it looks inside a mountain actually. And uh, to be honest, it is difficult to photograph uh, without getting a piece of trail into your, into your frame. And uh, same at this spot here. There wasn't all too much space to move uh, left or right, so you are really, really limited uh, with building up the composition in, in a gorge like that. It is all about deciding which spots do you want to include and uh, which not. And I was blown away by these different layers here in this image. It looks a bit like uh, different worlds actually. A dark sun gorge with floating water down there, a waterfall in the dark, and a little water cascade surrounded by this enchanting woodland back there and everything from the perspective of a vantage point to get this kind of whisper feeling as well. Yeah, it feels a bit like having a waterfall shot, a woodland shot and a whisper shot all brought together in one image only. And that is really cool. I really like this. And all in all, I'm blown away by this area around uh, Socha in Slovenia there are so many beautiful waterfalls and gorges. I will definitely go there again. And the road trip isn't over, by the way. After Slovenia, I drove to another place and I'll take you with me to work on an epic masterpiece. I think I got there, yeah, even the best image of this year so far. Or even two when I think about it. <laughs> so if you like epic landscape photography, don't forget to tune in next week. I will link the video here then for you. And my friends, Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumb up if you like this. See you next time. Bye.